Hi, everyone. Welcome to Waste 360's Nothing Wasted podcast. On every episode, we invite the most interesting people in waste, recycling, and organics to sit down with us and chat candidly about their thoughts, their work, this unique industry, and so much more. So thanks for listening and enjoy this episode. Hi, everyone. This is Liz Bothwell with Waste 360, and I'm with Willie Good from WB Waste and Good Companies. Welcome, Willie, and thanks for being on the show today. Well, thank you, Liz. I appreciate it. I'm glad to, with COVID going on, I'm glad to be anywhere to be speaking. (laughs) But thank you. (laughs) I'm with you. I agree. (laughs) Um, So we normally start in the beginning, Willie. So I would love to hear more about your background and how you found uh, the waste and recycling industry. Oh, wow. So beyond, beyond being a, a child of my parents and taking trash out the house. <laughs> my 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 mother, brother, um in the Washington DC area, um, had and this was back in the seventies, late seventies, he had um uh three three garbage trucks. Um and he sub worked for some of the, the, the bigger companies and, you know, had his own little accounts. So we um um my parents and my brother and sister, we grew up in a, a, a low-income housing area, which wasn't one of the better neighborhoods of Washington, D.C. So my mother said, you know, hey, he's 13, you know, I got some size on him. You know, can you come and just get him out the house? And can he just ride on a truck or do something? And at age of 13 in the summertime, you know, I was riding on a truck. And because um, I did have some size on me, and I, they had me start throwing trash in the back of the truck. Uh, and, and I, it, it, my work skills, I guess, truly came from my parents and, and my uncles. And, um, I just started taking a liking. I, I, one thing it gave me, um, being on a, 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 a trash truck, which was a real unloader commercially, I, at 13 years of age, I got to get out of my neighborhood and learn the city of Washington, D.C. From Georgetown to Southwest Waterfront to the Monument area to, to all over, you know, a commercial trash truck puts you in not only the streets but in the alleys also. And um, I stayed with it summer in, I mean, summer in and out. And at the age of 15 and a half, believe it or not, I was driving the truck because I, I, I just studied and, and loved it so much. And the guy that my uncle um, had employed, I drove better than he did. So he said, man, look, you drive all day. And I, you know, so my uncle saw us about two months later and said, why are you driving this truck? You don't have a permit. And uh, I said, I've been driving the whole summer. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, um, so I got my permit at the age of 16. And um, I was, you know, I was pursuing football and, and wanted to do football. And I had a, a major car accident. Uh, right at um, you know, about 15 years and 10 months old, you know, right before 16. And I was uh, messed up both of my legs. I was in the hospital for 10 days. And I couldn't walk for like a month or so. And the football dream just went away. Because it's, oh, you get impact in your knee, you damage your knee, you might not walk again. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to do what my uncles did. I'm going to focus on that. I'm going to have me three trash trucks. You, Liz, to this day, you still cannot tell me I would never own three trash trucks. I mean, that's all I used to write down as a kid. I used to have had the little matchbox cars where I run around the table. I made my own little trash station in the, in the house, in the bedroom, like, ah, uh-huh. oh, this truck here, this and that, and and it just it's just been a passion of mine since that 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 long ago. Wow, that's incredible, and I can't believe you started so early. And uh, that's amazing. And I'm still laughing. I'm still laughing about you driving. <laughs> oh yeah, that was a laughable moment. My uncle ain't finding it too funny, but uh, knock on wood, it, it, no accidents. <laughs> the trash got picked up. He said, "Okay, well, <laughs> you made it through, so I can't get mad no more, right?" <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But I mean, I it's fantastic to hear and amazing that you made that dream come true but i mean willie you've gone from three trucks to how many now i mean you have such successful businesses uh, tell me a little Liz, tell me uh, about that 
Uh, currently today, ooh, operationally, there's uh, over about 250 collection trucks on the street every day. Uh, four, 13 different sites, four transfer stations, one recycling MRF, two recycling transfer stations to bring to the bigger MRF. Uh, a landfill, we got, you know, with me and my partners, we opened up an organic greenfield site in the, the west of Richmond, Virginia last year. We just saw our break, our one year anniversary, and we went from zero tons, we roughly around 1,200 tons a day for so C and D construction debris. And we do a recycling component there also. And we just, um, it's been good. Uh, the business has uh, been very good. I've got great people. Uh, probably on payroll roster, a little over 900 employees. Oh, God. I call them co workers, by the way, Liz. Nobody worked for me. We all work together. I have 900 co workers, you know? And, um, oh. you know, I, I just smile at it every day and just, I got great friends in the industry that I, I deal with. I learn from them and share stories and, 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 you know, and, and I like to teach and I like to bring others on. I've been a real big success on having other companies start up and I get them, you know, support. I let them sit around the table and they let me be me and they learn from it, you know. Oh, that's amazing. And I'm sure you have so much to teach. And I can just tell talking with you, you have a wonderful way about you, even just your humility in calling everyone coworkers. And I know service is a huge um benefit that your customers get from you as well so i can imagine how well you treat your employees you know you you, you hit it on a point uh because i was taught service from my uncle and my dad because my dad he broke off when he um when he got hurt on construction my uncle helped him with a a a, a small open body truck and of course it was my dad and that's why you know with Leo, me and my brother used to work with my dad and you know, he was the only thing about his customer service was that it was scheduled three days a week. He wanted to go six days a week. And at, at that age, I was saying, Dad, I don't think we're doing this right. I think we, we ain't going to get no more money if we keep picking them up six days a week. He said, but no, we're doing good service. And man, me and him had that day. And I was like, okay, you are the father and I do live here. So I'm going to do it your way. <laughs> so um, customer service for me um, – is, is important. Um, you know, I, 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 I've serviced the customer and then we work from there. We work after that to get everything else done, you know? Oh, yeah. And I'm sure that's what sets you apart as well. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And so here we are, 2020, this crazy year and pandemic. How has it affected your business? Because I know you're commercial and residential, right? Yes, yes. We, 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 uh, we, we, we were... We were like a 65% residential, 35% commercial, and then it's kind of it's a reverse. You know, 65% commercial, 35% residential. Residential waste, um, of course, at the resident home. I, I make I tell people this story that the resident home has now became the extra hotel extended stay, the restaurant, the club. The, you know, everything is at the residential home now. <laughs> And the waste, oh my God, it just um, has has grown tremendously, you know, about anywhere from 25 to 30 percent. But you know, one thing that affect a little bit of our safety, we had to catch ourselves on safety meetings, and we was like, why did this certain driver nick this car or scratch that bumper? And you know what we noticed? We like majority everybody at home when they was going to work. So when you bring a trash truck down the street. And in D.C. area, we have a lot of on-street parking, by the way. And the cars are there, and everybody probably trying to run to the store to get coffee or breakfast or, you know, whatever curry out they can get or visiting each other. It, it caused a havoc with safety. And we had to bring our crew in and really retrain them, uh, not only continue COVID safely by cleaning our units and making sure people masks with their masks on and making sure they're, you know, they're okay, the family okay. Early on, I went on and I gave an incentive to my coworkers immediately. And I said, look, you successfully make it to work Monday through Friday. We're going to give you an extra 50 to $75 a week because we want you to be able to wash your clothes more. We want you to be able to help your family stay safe and you stay safe. And we can't take that out your regular wages. And no, it, it, we, we, and I did it from the heart. So I wasn't looking for any brownie points or 
oh, my God, you know, Willie trying to score high. No, I did it because this is what our love for a company do for me. And then it hit our books, but the same token, the smile I got and, and the respect that I continue to get from my coworkers, I'd I trade that in any day. Oh, I bet. And I'm sure, I mean, the loyalty they feel for you for doing things like that, especially human to human level, you know? Absolutely. You know, another thing about COVID was when everybody, they were, had the chance to, I say, stay home. And the, the, the district, Washington, D.C., is like a big government town. So a lot of the government agencies, you know, and say if your 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 wife or your wife or your husband or your your daughter or son, and they staying home, and you because we didn't get a chance to stay home, that was another part that we I had to play a big part in. And good thing I I, I grew a lot of the people that with me. I've been 30 years in business next year. So I started when I was age of 23. So my birthday next week, by the way, next Wednesday. And um, I, I'm celebrating 30 years in uh, November of 2021. And I have so many people been with me from day one. That's over 20 years. So when I see them, not only I'm worried about COVID and worried about somebody getting hurt and getting ill or, you know, not going to be here, but they're, they're my family. So I had two things going on, you know what I'm saying? So I had to, you know, really show my presence and my safety and my caring and Good, good thing they, 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 they had a part of my style that we'll weather the storm, and that's what we, we continue to do every day is weather the storm. Oh, that's fantastic, and happy early birthday, by the way. Well, thank you. you did you send me the gift? <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got to get on it. I'm like, please. <laughs> as soon as we hang up, no. I promise. <laughs> I, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> So I know, you know, you're in D.C. and Maryland. How do you think that part of the country fared, say, compared to, like, the West Coast? And I'm in the Northeast, so I know it, in terms of COVID, it, it hit us hard. So it was, you know, for the municipalities and stuff, it was it was tough initially. But how did how did it go for you guys? And are you feeling back, somewhat back on track? It, it, oh, yeah. We, we, um, I, I, we the, the, this, the, the district... Prince George's, Northern Virginia area, done very, very well. We have a small operation in Halifax, North Carolina, that done well. Uh, we have operation in uh, the Norfolk, Virginia, Richmond, Virginia area. And we, uh, I don't know if you know, we're in Palm Beach, Florida. We, we, we successfully celebrate October 1st, uh, my first franchise contract in Palm Beach, Florida. And so I got all them different divisions to go to. And around me, and, and especially around this area, the DMV, uh, has done well. Baltimore City has took an impact, and um, we geared up after a lot of study. We geared up. We are helping Baltimore City uh, collect some of their residential trash. We we service about uh, what was the count on that? Ten to twelve thousand homes for Baltimore City right now under contract because they had a lot of cases of COVID, and they wasn't getting the trash up and the recyclables up. And, um, you know, I had to be make sure my crew was safe and make sure we not going to go in there and do a bad job. But we we in there helping them. And then Baltimore City is very thankful for what, what we brought to the table. Oh, I'm sure you were. My goodness. What help? I know you talked about safety earlier in terms of the pandemic and, you know, what's going on out there. But I, it's distracted driving months. And I know you started as a driver. So, I mean, do you have any advice for drivers out there now? I know it's a different world, but you're seeing this day to day as as an owner operator yourself. Yes, man, driving is truly my my. I, I still mess with my when I hope we have meetings and safety meetings. I say, yeah, I know I'm still the best driver. They like, yeah, whatever you want you. And I say, I right, give me the truck keys. <laughs> they like, nope, we're not letting you drive. You know, it's short stuff. But driving. Oh, man, it's so much more different than when I was driving 30-plus years ago, 40 years ago. Um, because, you know, you got people, you know, us, Paul, probably me, with distractions in your vehicle. And that's called that cell phone. And the cell phone is just not what you talk on, but you can watch social media, you can text, you know, just so much more to make the I just be riding in traffic and looking at cars with nobody in front of them. And of course, when I ride beside them, they head into their phone trying to look up. So we we try to let our, our, our drivers know, look, please, continue to take your time. 
you know, you stay continue to stay a good driver. Uh, you know, we of course our, 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 we we reward them for their good driving behaviors, and we continue to teach them that there's so many distractions. You know, every time I hear read, we try to put distractions up on all our local facility boards to say this is a new distraction. And COVID was one. You know, new distractions. You know, more more people are at home. You know, the kids are not in school. You know, so you, you, you have to continue to be safe. At the same time, you understand that they weren't about their health and safety. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, my God, I'm touching this trash, and I don't know if the people in the house have COVID or the person that come and trying to walk to the truck got COVID, you know. So um, it's, it's been a task. I, Liz, if I tell you it was easy, I don't think I'd be doing this call right now with you, but it, it's, been a, it's been a major task. But we, we, once again, we, we continue to get through it as a team. That's great. And it, they're lucky to have you as the leader to keep them motivated and, and moving forward. And so, Willie, I know you've embraced technology. Um, can you talk about how it has helped your company and how it's keeping the industry itself moving forward? Yes. Um, and I just spoke on that. So a lot of the, you know, I call a lot of the new millennium, the drivers of that, of age of 35 and under, you know, they, they can adapt more to the um, text world or technology of, you know, the systems of, you know, we have some systems in place for routing and, 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 you know, we have, um, you know, third eye camera systems on a, a majority of all our units, which has been very helpful. Um, you know, uh, a lot of the, the coworkers were like, Oh, y'all, y'all, y'all looking at me. I said, no, it's not about, it's not about you. Is about the world, about safety around. It's, yes, it's thought with you, but it's around everybody around you. Uh, and um, the technology has helped our company with um, help routing people that don't know an urban city or a, a commercial route as well. And you know, we can help them with that. Um, and and just the 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 gadgets of the, the camera system for safety meetings and training, because. Uh, when you see something and it's, and it's your it's your coworker and the truck that you represent, it impacts more. I can show them a video of a truck, say ABC or you know or Joe Holland service, and they're like, oh, that's them. But when it's happened to be a, a WB Waste or a good company's truck, they're like, oh, that was us. You know what I'm saying? And it, and, it, and it just put a little bit more thinking into, oh man, we all got to be careful and we got to watch out for each other. So technology has been working um, for us pretty good. Oh, that's great. And and I love your take on it, how you said, you know, this workforce embraces it because of their age and just they're digitally savvy, right? Oh, yes, yes. And wow, so next year you'll be in business 30 years. I mean, how, I mean, we talked about technology and how has the industry changed in your eyes over the years? The industry has a change. Well, you know, I, I, I went through this. I went through seeing recycling being source separated at the curve and not much on commercial business less it was just cardboard only to being a single stream uh, component. Um, and now with China doing what they're doing, I'm in that part of the business, not just a collector, but a processor trying to, you know, uh, help, you know, cities and communities recycle. It's been a big change with the, uh, the single stream. Single stream has really been a challenge. Um, I've, we got a we got an area of city that they still do source separation and uh, we use the split body trucks for and they they smile on them because like, ah we didn't quite get caught in the single stream part. Um, so that portion has happened. Another part has happened is um, and which I'm, I'm happy about. There's different type of in jobs versus just industrial jobs. So the work pool, the work you know, the work staff, and and getting the 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 workers on the trucks has not been as easy as it, it has been 20 years ago. Uh, and, and, and training and keeping people to, 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 to be with your company to help you do a good customer service and keep accounts and, and just keep a good safety record has been challenging because there are other opportunities out there. You know, you know that, that big blue Earl truck with the A on it, there's many opportunities there. That I'll, you know, they'll come in and say, "Hey, we can go here and be not only work for them, but be self-employed." And I'm like, oh my God! So that's been a lot of change. Keep adjusting um, our rates of, of, of pay, you know, which I'm for 
uh, people getting paid very well to live. You, you, you got to live. You got to support yourself and your family, you know, the, the, the American dream, you know. Um, so that part has been the challenge. And I see it going forward. I was just like, hey, what, how are we going to plan, you know, with female X here and male X here that have been with us 25, 30 years? Who do we replace them with? And that's been some of our targets. And I, to be honest with you, it's a, it's a project out for all my senior managers right now to work on that to see how can we go the next 10 years to 2030 and more uh, with with that type of with the type of change. Yeah, no, that's that's absolutely true. And you've seen it all. I mean, is the driver shortage a big issue still with COVID? Uh, it has it has it has calmed down. More and I just asked this on a call with my managers, and they say, "Well, we we have um you know some um you know more applicants coming in lately than what they were. I guess certain certain jobs have not opened back up, and you know the only thing is you just can't go get your CDL and come drive a truck, especially for my company type of insurance I have. So that's one hinder. So you know because usually we we prefer you to have a two years or you know, three years experience and some kind of you know." You got to learn somewhere, right? And I understand that, but either you got to come in and be a laborer on our trucks that have, you know, the real loaders that have laborers on it, or um, you have to do some kind of major, major training, or yeah, I guess you have to come somewhere else in the industry. And that's that's been tough because really what, what we all doing is trading the driver from, you know, company X to company Z, you know, and you're trying to do everything you can to retain them. Um, but in this area, DMV, um, and for my company, I can speak for mine, because everything we've done, and I did that incentive way before, really, I probably still do it, and any other company didn't do, uh, that really kept, uh, I, 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 a funny story, I had two haulers called me, I said, man, what are you doing? I'm like, what are you talking about? Man, my crew's saying, <laughs> you're giving your guys an incentive. I'm like, well, I'm trying to survive and keep my employees safe and happy. I mean, I can't, so they, like, you know, like, I'm sorry, I, I, I can't count your budget and run your company at the same time, you know? <laughs> it's so true. Hey, they should have thought of it, right? <laughs> yeah, hey, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you got to do what you got to do to keep your doors open and, and make sure you can, what you, if I set out to be an entrepreneur and, and, and going to have people uh, working with me, working around me, and they all we all got the same uh, purposes to to go somewhere where we can support ourselves and, and, and raise our family and live the, the life to retirement and, and enjoy it, you know? So that's, right. that's <laughs> we'll always be my focal point. Yeah, that's a great way to look at it. And then do you think the industry is more diverse now, Willie? I mean, I'm sorry. I felt like even me, I started in with Waste 360 eight, nine years ago. And just being at Waste Expo, it, it looked, um, it didn't look so diverse back then. But then over the years, we started to see more young people, more diversity, um, more women. Uh, what do you think, especially at your level now? Well, I will say this, and you know, just to be direct and transfer, because it is what it is. You know, I, I'm, I'm I'm a minority individual, and um, I have afforded the opportunity to teach and have a lot of more. Um, uh, from minority workers to um, uh, women workers and all that to teach to another level. I'm not saying the other companies don't, but I know my door is more, my, I say my door is open and I understand it way more. I feel everybody should, you know, you put in your resume and you write down your application. If you qualify, you qualify. Um, I know I have done that. And then another part I have done is I have been teaching others how to be entrepreneurs, and a lot of them has been, um, you know, minority owners. And um, so I have been bringing that up, and I feel a part of with at the Waste Expo because I let them know. I, I've been going to Waste Expo, oof, I probably over 25 years. I've, I've been there every year. I, I probably, you know, I haven't missed a year. Um, and um, it's, first of all, it was one of my vacation spots when I did take a break, you know, to go to Chicago or Vegas <laughs> and all the places like Dallas and, you know, Atlanta and all that. Um, but it, the opportunities, the opportunities are opening up a lot more to bring in talent. And it's good, it's good talent out there. 
it's great talent out there, you know. Um, I think, if you know, like anything else, you give a person a chance, um, you'll you'll be amazed how that, that worked out, just giving that one chance, instead of just being your your friend, your niece, your nephew, you know, somebody like that, you know. Um, right. I can go on for days on that, you know, because I, I speak it from one side and I look at it on to the other side, you know. So right. um, I could... But I'm at peace with it, and I like the way it's going. Did, did, did that address your question? You know, you definitely did, and it's nice to see that you're actually seeing the change occur, um, especially with current events. Right? It's it's. Um, I'm hoping the industry is more aware, and it and it seems like they are. It's just it has to be action and not just talk, right? So. Yes, absolutely. That's, that's what I hope the future is for sure. Absolutely. But, I, you know, I, I deal with a lot of the CEOs of the companies a larger size than me. You know, I'm in a, the, the Detachable Container Association, and I have an awesome time with the family. That's We call it the family. That's the family. And they, they're hot there into it, you know. They're like, hey, you know, Willie, I, I can't we, you know, because I can, I, like I say, I, I, I'm a minority person. So they can like, what do you think, you know? And I'm like, hey, it can work this way. This is what you do. Call me anytime. So that's been, especially in our industry, the waste, the waste industry, you know, um, that's been a real good hit. Um, and and, and that, that organization that's now is becoming, having more uh, diversity in it also. Good. That's great to hear. And so, I mean, you've, you've built so many good businesses and you have such good partnerships and you really lead with heart. What's next for you and, and your companies? Ooh, <laughs> but you, you know, you know, it's always that biggest contract, right? So it can be the contract <laughs> yeah. you want to service or the contract you get. You know, you know what I mean by that. That's the exit plan. And, and thirty, right. being thirty years in it, I, Liz, being thirty years in it, I, I have to share with you. Yes, do I have a? Do I have a thought of an exit plan? Well, of course I have, because it's the biggest contract. You know. If my 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 woolly good world when I step back and say okay, if you have an exit plan or a plan to the biggest contract, what are you going to do with it? I mean, I mean, it's only but so many you can do it, but so many trips and hours and boats or whatever you can ride on and and enjoy. So my thing is, I'm looking to develop and teach. You know, I want to teach and give back. I want to speak at. Uh, inner city schools and say, oh, guess what? I have all this, and guess what? I built it from. I'm not just your athlete or your, you know, your singer or, or movie star. I'm, I'm, I, I drove a garbage truck. You know what I'm saying? And get their attention that way. And saying I right. have lived the life that I've seen some things and I enjoy a lot of things. You know, so that's 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 one of my purpose. Now, I do love this industry. I, this industry just when you, like how do you, have you ever heard of it? If it wants it in your bloodstream, it's in your blood. I tell somebody, you cut me, you trash bags will fall out first, then blood. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> oh, I love that. <laughs> what a great way to say that too, because it's so true, and I think so many people have <laughs> feel the same way. Look, hey, Liz, hey, Liz, hey, Liz I, I, I mess with the doctors when I, I go to the doctor to do my physicals and all. I always mess with them. I say. Watch out, man. You might see a can or a bag roll out. <laughs> like, you know what? It's too funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> they must crack up. <laughs> oh, yeah, they love it. They love it when I come in. they like, oh, love. We got Mr. Good coming in today. Comedy hour. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so, really, do you have anyone in your family working with you? I know it's such a family-oriented yeah, yeah, industry, yeah. too. Um, Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Um, um, I have a lot of my, a lot of you know, cousins and members that grew up with me, and they we all was doing this. So they have a lot of them driving. They've been managers and all. Some of the important people is um, uh, my brother that grew up. He's three years younger than me. Great operator. And he's the, we, you know, his name is Kirk, and I can take Kirk. Like we go to went to Palm Beach. I said, right, Kirk, we got to put out um, eighteen thousand carts and six hundred dumpsters. And I like, right, consider it done. And I go do the, you know, the other side, and Kirk make it happen. So he's our special project. Any anywhere I need to go, because he know my style and our work ethic, and and I know and I trust in him doing that. 
And I have my oldest son. I have five kids, by the way, four boys and a, a baby girl. My, that's my life, the daughter. My boys hate me when I say that. But they, they, they take it the same way. So I have a, a 31-year-old that he's operating the Palm Beach operation for us. And my um, 24-year-old, um, he's um, in Charlotte, North Carolina, doing some work remotely, and he's looking to do his career. And I have um, my 21 and 20, and my daughter's 20, my daughter go to school in uh, FAMU in Florida, and my son go to Old Dominion in Norfolk, and then I have a high schooler, 11-year-old. And, and the boys will tell you, and the girl, when you come age of 16, you have to do two summers on a truck. You have to be on a truck away from me, you know, making, you got to smell it, touch it, feel it. And I move them around each month to a different segment of the business. Not to say you got to do this, but you need to understand how our family got to where we at. Wow. What a fantastic concrete lesson. I mean, did they all handle it differently? <laughs> I know from, for my kids, I, can, I, I know exactly <laughs> how they handle it. Yeah. yeah well, well, my daughter, my daughter's been the toughest one and, and, and remotely, I wish I was still as driving the truck back then as more because I would have, of course, took her with me. And, and I'm, not, I'm not separating it just because it's the dominant male feel. And I just wanted to be, you know, like, I right, make sure she okay. So she did a lot of office work and ride with me a lot to site visits and do things like that. And one day she was riding with me and we went to a transfer station and it was pretty smelly that day. And she had her nose covered up. And I looked at her and said, girl, I'll cover your nose. You know, that's the smell of money. <laughs> she's, like, she's, like, she's like, yeah, whatever, Dad. That stink. That's not your smell of money. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, Dad, you can't sell that to me. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, she, but she shared that story when she speaks. You know, she's she's looking at being criminal justice. So when she talks, oh my gosh, she's a great talker. She'll stand up, and when she talks, she'll wave her hands in front of her nose. And I'm like, my dad one day took me this place, and I was like, oh my god, he talking about that's the smell of money. And I'm like, <laughs> and you just it's so funny when you hear it said and act it out. Oh my god, I, I get I I get chuckle pink on it, you know. <laughs> oh, I bet hysterical, and what a fun memory for her too. I mean, she'll be telling that story forever. I love it. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, and the most important question, are you a Washington football team fan? Or oh. fan? <laughs> uh, I am a Washington football team fan, Washington Wizards, Washington National, Washington Captains, Washington Misses. I'm Washington-based, homegrown. You know, my kids, we all Washington football team. It's hard to roll it off our lips. Uh, we will challenge anybody. We do, if you ever in the area for a game, you like football, we do one of the best tailgates there is. And we have a tailgate sometime up to 300 plus people at our tailgate uh, for the Washington football team. So to answer that, yes. <laughs> oh, I will I will let you know. I mean, I'm kind of scared to tell you my team. You going to say the Dallas Eagles? or you, no. oh the Eagles? Oh, Eagles. oh no, I, we, I have a lot of a lot of coworkers are Eagles fan. We love when the the, the Eagle bird fly into town and we can clip a wing. So come on through. <laughs> <laughs> so don't worry. All right, how about if I if I come to the tailgate, I'll bring cheesesteaks. Is that fair? Is that all right? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And have all your Eagle gear on because we want to make sure. You know, when you you know not feeling as well, and you start crying. You can soak it up in that jersey, you know. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> you know, you know, I'm talking true. trash right now, right? That's, we, we, what's this about? <laughs> Wait, we're talking trash, right? So, so it's just trash. Yeah, talk. we're allowed. So everybody hear this. So don't take it, don't take it personal. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's fair. It's always a good rivalry. I love it. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I am happy to see Alex Smith back out there, though. Wow, what a story of resilience with that guy. I mean, even just yeah. to be walking again, let alone out there, is awesome. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> oh well, oh uh, Willie, I had so much fun talking with you. Is there anything else you want to share before I I let you go? No, uh, Liz. Um, first of all, I really appreciate this, and 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 from anybody to share the story to you and to the group. Uh, I appreciate them. They, they, if it, the people that, that know me, and, and they know Willie Walsh, the passion, and, and especially 
I love Washington D.C. area. It's, it's my hometown, but they know I, I, I love this this, this industry. Um, I study it. I'm, I'm a hard worker, um, you know, and, and I just want everybody to continue to practice safe measurements. Let's get through this together so we can bring our 2020 parties back. <laughs> and um, and you know, yes. and 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 can't wait to see Waste Expo on a grand level of us all doing what we always used to do. Yes, I'm with you, and we it'll it'll be worth the wait. That's for sure. Absolutely. Oh well, thank you so much, and good luck with everything. I'm I'm just your story is amazing. I'm so proud of of all that you've done, and um, we can't wait to to see what's next with you. And I love that your family's involved too. That just makes it even more special. Okay, thank you so much, Liz. All right, have a great day, Willie. Talk soon.